The urine panel can give us information about fluid balance, can give us a window into certain conditions that may be cross-checked through urine, like kidney disease or metabolic disease. But maybe most importantly and classically, we look at urine to understand if there's a presence of infection. The most common infections you'll see reflected in a urine test is a urinary tract infection that tend to be more common in women and typically bacterial in nature. A UTI may present with burning with urination, urgency with urination, and generally like lower abdominal pain. When I'm concerned about a urinary tract infection, I'm specifically looking at white blood cells, leukocyte esterase, nitrites, as well as bacteria specifically. The presence of white blood cells essentially just communicate that there's likelihood of an infection present. White blood cells are immune cells that tend to fight infections. Leukocyte esterase is an enzyme that will get elevated as a function of white blood cells being present in urine. So when we see a leukocyte esterase being elevated, we know one, white blood cells are around, two, there's an increased likelihood of infection. So nitrites are byproducts of bacteria that really are only gonna be seen when bacteria are present. So when we see elevated nitrites, this is one more indication that you have a urinary tract infection. When you see these markers present, so the, the white blood cells, the nitrite, the leukocyte esterase, you're gonna be pretty suspicious when you see those in combination with someone who has symptoms that you have a urinary tract infection. So when I look at a urinalysis, when I think about how to correlate that with kidney health, I might look at both protein, so excess protein in the urine may be a sign that the kidney is not having proper filtering capacity. I also look at other markers like glucose when I'm thinking about the presence of metabolic dysfunction. Glucose really shouldn't be in high levels in the urine, and when it's spilling into the urine, it's essentially saying, we've reached our load of glucose in the body and now it's starting to spill into the urine. Glucose has a independent negative effect on the kidney as well. And so both of these things give us window into the fact that there's metabolic dysfunction present. So hydration can be assessed through color and characteristics of urine. You may see kind of more, a hydrated person might have kind of pale yellow urine, darker urine, might be an indication that you are dehydrated. You can also look at sediments to see if they are kind of highly present or not. And when you see these numbers out of balance, you might be concerned about dehydration. If you're someone who struggles or has a UTI, you might think about preventatively making sure you're properly hydrated and consuming products with cranberry or D-mannose. If you have an active urinary tract infection, and especially if you're symptomatic, you wanna to talk to your clinician as getting on antibiotics is probably the most effective route to eliminate the infection. So generally speaking, the kidneys and urine are obviously quite connected. So when you're thinking about how to support kidney health, you wanna be mindful about metabolic types of practices. So keeping sugar balanced, you want a kind of balanced amount of protein that you're consuming, whole foods, hydration. Uh, these things can support your kidney health and therefore like be reflected positively in your urine. Yeast is a type of fungus, and so you may find yeast in your urine, sometimes in women if they're struggling with yeast infections, but it can also be seen in people who might be immunocompromised and or people that are struggling with diabetes. When we're thinking about genders and urine panels, it might actually be the case that a little bit of bacteria in a urine sample is considered normal and not concerning in a woman as opposed to a man. Because of the way our ureters work, our ureters or urethras are much shorter than males' urethras, we tend to have a little bit of reflux that comes as far as bacteria goes in our urine that can be considered normal. The complete blood count essentially gives us information about certain cells in your body and can give us a window into understanding oxygen carrying capacity, it may clue us into potential nutrients that might be off, it's involved in your immune system, and therefore gives us kind of lots of areas to look at when we're thinking about your health.